everybody, Mr. Regan here, and today we're going to be looking at a practice question that we might see on our summative that deals with everything that we've gone over in Chapter 1 with our vocab and our key concepts. Uh, and it's going to require us to kind of use those to break down and problem solve through um, some unique questions. So, uh, as always, we'll start off looking at the question and all the information provided. And when we get done, you're going to come back to the slide here and you're going to put your answer to the multiple choice in this section here. So whether it's A, B, or C, you'll put your answer. Um, and then once you're done, you'll unpause the video. You'll watch the remainder of it where we talk about the answer and how and why we came to that. And as always, you'll end by going over your practice survey here and telling me whether you got the question right and you know why wrong but you know how to fix it or right or wrong but quite don't understand the correct answer so uh, watch the video answer the question after you pause it and then reflect at the end so let's take a look at the, our very first practice question in front of us we have a few different sets of images that we're going to use to help answer this big question here why do these two species have this shared body structure so on the far left we have an image of a fossilized dragonfly uh, with all of its different body structures. We have an image of a wasp that we would see living today. And then over here, we have a shared structure that both of these organisms have, and both of these species have, and that is a filiform antennae, so the part of their body right at the very head uh, with the two little prongs coming off, that is their shared structure. So when we look at these different or organisms, the fossilized and the living one and their shared structure, we got to ask ourselves, why do these two species have this shared structure. And we're looking at these three answers down here. I'm going to pick the best one that helps explain why they have these shared structures. So let's take a look. Letter A, the dragonfly and the wasp are different species, so they must, have, uh, must not share an ancestral population. They inherited their antennae structure from separate ancestor populations. Okay, so that's answer A. Answer B, the dragonfly and the wasp both share the same ancestor population that had an antennae. They inherited their structure from the ancestor population. And then C, all the species have their own specific body structures, so it is coincidence that the this dragonfly and wasp each happen to have the same antennae structure. So we have our three answers here. It is is A, B, or C. We're going to go back to our slideshow here, and you're going to put your answer, which do you think it is, and you're going to pause the video right now. And when you're ready to go over the answer, obviously hit play. Good luck. All right. Hopefully we pause the video, and we're ready to talk about the answer. Let's take a look. All right, so in the very first one, it talks about how the dragonfly and the wasp are different species, so they must not share an ancestral population. And we know that that simply just isn't true. Shared body structures is evidence that organisms, whether they are the same species or different species, share a ancestor population. So we know right there that that simply isn't true, okay? We're gonna look at C next. All species have their own specific body structures, so it's a coincidence that they have these same structures. Well, that's not true either. In fact, most organisms on the planet can trace their ancestry back to um, a common ancestor that has one or many shared structures, and we can go back all the way to the beginning of time and do, to do just that. So the correct answer is B, the dragonfly and wasp both share the same ancestor population, so some common ancestor way back, and they inherited the same structure from this population. So. We've gone over how to go, how to read these different questions and the different options, how to pick the best solution for the question. And at this point, we should go back to the survey and put our X where we uh, best fit. If you have questions, reach out to me. Otherwise, good luck with the rest of the review.